Good morning. So, it seemed to me like the you know, mid part of June would be a perfect time to do a video on how to fix space heaters. Of course, that's not true. Uh, cleaning the lab, uh, we've been doing a lot of sorting. And one of these uh, may look familiar to a lot of people. This is commonly referred to as a milk house heater or a small space heater. They're just supplemental heaters that uh, aren't very complicated at all. And they can be had at the local Walmart, or if you prefer the fancy store, Target, uh, for anywhere from $15 to $20 US. And they're commonly used in, in rooms that just require a little bit of extra heat. Uh, and they are fairly efficient for what they do. They're not very complicated, they're cheap, they last for a couple of years maybe, and then you chuck them out and you get another one. So in Northwest Ohio, where I live, uh, these are these are very very common. You see uh, houses that maybe aren't insulated thoroughly because they're older, uh, or they're in small shops, garages. A lot of people will just close the garage door and then heat their garage with with things like this. So it's enough to take the chill off. Uh, and they come in variable wattages. I think this one's probably I don't know 750 and 1200 watts. Maybe I, I don't recall. Uh, but they're usually indicated and they're a very simple design. So this one, uh, the problem that it started to have was when you would have the thermostat, which that's not really a thermostat, but uh, that's what the indicator would tell you. It's, it's, it's a thermostat. Uh, and it does sort of work like one. Uh, when you plug this in you immediately will get a light this is a lighted switch and this switch will select either one or two heat settings and it's basically and we'll get into that it's just how many coils uh, of the uh, resistant wire it's heating up so uh, if you have it in position one you're using half the coils and if you flip it over to position two you're completing the circuit so that you're using all the coils and it will get quite warm and it will blow a lot of air uh, uh, you know comparatively uh, so it, it works this is essentially a big hair dryer if you want to look at it like that so the problem that this was was having was it would turn on turn off turn on turn off turn on turn off that's annoying but that's exactly how it did it so if you plug this in you'll see that the and I won't do this for very long you'll see that the switch lights up I think we can see that I'll pop the light off there we go. You see our switch is on, switch is off. So as soon as you plug this in, this has power. And if we adjust this thermostat, it does not turn on anymore. But that's what it would do before. So um, my assumption was it's probably something simple because these are simple devices. And I was pretty much right. So the question is, do we repair it or do we simply chuck it? Or, or do we use this as some kind of a housing for another uh, for another project. Now, I don't know what we could put in here, but there's a lot of things that could be placed uh, in inside of this. I mean, it's already got these handles on it, like a rack mount device. It's got a place that's already drilled through. We could put something down here. We have a switch right here. I mean, there's things that could be scavenged out of this. And this is all metal, so that means it's shielded. Uh, and it wouldn't be hard to modify it to use for a lot of different projects. So I don't have anything in particular uh, in mind, but there's a lot of different things that you could do with it. And I mean, for $16 and we're going to throw this out anyway, why not, right? So uh, again, this is just what is wrong with this and how these things work. I thought I'd shoot a, a video on it. So I think what I'll do is I'll reposition this camera. I'm going to spin this around so you can take a look at the guts. Uh, you might find it interesting. Really not much here. And then uh, we may even, uh, you know, draw up a quick schematic and see how this thing kind of works. They're really simple, uh, yeah, but uh, not exactly the safest thing in the world. I'll show you why. So hang tight. Let me change this around. Okay, so I've gone ahead and turned this thing around so you can see into the back of it. Uh, there's some dirt and debris floating around. I had already cleaned off the fan section, so uh, that was just stuff that I haven't vacuumed out yet. So at this point, what I like to do whenever I work on anything that has electricity passing through is I like to take a metal screwdriver and just start poking around until I see arcs and sparks. That is called sarcasm. For those not familiar, um, what I like to do is use sarcasm uh, thick and rich like a syrup and you just put it right on pancakes and waffles and it is very delicious. I love my sarcasm. 
clearly we do not want this thing plugged in so this is unplugged it's isolated from any electricity and you if you were going to run some electricity through this to do some diagnostic testing obviously you would want to uh, make sure that you're using at the very least an isolation transformer so uh, I can tell you this if you use something like this with dim bulbs it just won't even turn on because it won't they can't pull enough current so uh, but an isolation transformer is a good thing uh, some kind of a disconnect switch that's you know isolated is also good um, let's see here so what do we have well in the back of our chassis which is down here you can see that we have well you may be able to see we have do we do have a grommet and that grommet is going to insulate our our outlet uh, plug wire from uh, chafing against the metal in case there was any bare metal you wouldn't want any contact obviously and it's going to protect the cord so that's they did something right there they got a little glue it looks like in there and no relief not but uh, they definitely have put some glue in there to kind of give it some uh, hold and in addition to that they they did give us a little bit extra wire and clearly we can take the whole back off and not pull on anything so that was good uh, as we move up into the unit here it's very basic starting at the bottom we have our power uh, divider essentially we're going to either excite let's see how many coils we have one two three four five six we're either going to excite six, six of these coils if we're on the number two setting or only three of these coils if we're on the number one setting so that kind of makes sense if we only have three coils getting hot then we're only going to put out that much heat if we excite six coils it's going to be well, effectively times two but you know, there's going to be some problems with math and it's not going to be exactly but that's pretty close so we have our connections for those coils up here uh, and one down here and then we also have our fan which is free and spinning so all of our contacts uh, or excuse me all of our coils are good and all of our our fan motor is working properly everything in this works I'm going to give you a little hint of what where our problem is, is down here at the switch so our switch if we take a look at everything in total and we try and find our safety features you may recognize that there are, well there aren't any there just there aren't any there is nothing there is no there's no safety capacitors there's no there is nothing the only safety feature that you have in this thing is this uh, momentum switch right down here and this is so that if the heater is pushed over kicked over knocked over whatever forward if it goes face down um, so that the coils are closest to the carpet of your or whatever's on the floor closest to the floor uh, this moment this uh, momentum switch will will push forward and it separates the contacts inside of this little thermostat so that's the only safety that you have on here now if this thing were to move backwards it might you know bounce a little bit and disconnect them momentarily but it'll still run so uh, if you're wondering how that works that's it if it tips forward with the face down so that the heat is blowing out on top of the carpet this thing disconnects right away so that's the only safety that you have on here if you have some sort of a component failure or a short it will continue to pull current um, until something fails usually a uh, in a very hot and, and melty kind of way and out of the decades that I've had these things I had one heater that was similar to this I don't think it was a patent but again they're all very close in design uh, that that did fail in such a manner and it, it uh, the cord while it didn't melt was noticeably hot and where I noticed it was older outlets in a house that I used to live in um, right at the end of the plug see about here uh, it, it did start to get soft and it was discoloring the outlet and when I pulled the plug immediately because there's no power switch on this you just have to pull the plug out of the wall it was hot to the touch and there was a spark and it arced into the outlet so when I felt the outlet the outlet was hot so this is basically every homeowner's worst nightmare you know you've you've used this thing now I was using this as a uh, temporary heating while I was doing some working at work inside of a, a bedroom and I actually had uh, the uh, fixture the uh, out the above well, let's see the ceiling light fixture I would I would assume that would be was actually out because I was changing something out and I just left for you know, 20 minutes or so half an hour and when I came back that's what I had found so essentially I wound up replacing the outlet the wire that went from the the switch on the wall 
the light switch is where it was getting its power from. Uh, I replaced that entire section of wiring and I also went back and replaced the fuse in the fuse box because my theory was it was drawing a lot of current for a long time in order to heat that cord up uh, and I didn't do any kind of a tear down on that unit I just threw it out um, but it, it was at least pulling enough current to make everything nice and toasty and melty and I didn't want to take the chance that the the fuse wasn't doing its job correctly so I just replaced the breaker um, and that's the kind of stuff that you may run into that's why you you have to use your head when you're using these kind of devices there's no safety in here as far as uh, over current it's it's just going to continue to pull current until that that uh, short goes away uh, in some kind of a glorious epic failure so i think what i'm going to do now is a uh, i think i mentioned this it's the switch that's causing the problem so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the switch out and give you a better closer look at that switch um, and uh, we'll kind of go from there okay so at this point i've taken the thermostat out of the unit uh, which is what I suspect of being the problem and I'm using a, uh, a method of diagnosing it by simply just bypassing the thermostat and how I've done that is I have a 120 volt rated uh, power switch that came out of a power uh, excuse me a power supply that I just happen to have sitting here uh, and it works and in the closed position it is going to act exactly like the thermostat so our thermostat uh, essentially is just got a couple of contact points which I'll show you a little closer here in a minute and when they're closed it's going to act just like our closed switch so if this is plugged into an outlet as it's not yet, uh, this will allow the current to flow through and everything should work just fine so this is the part where I tell you that this will be plugged into a 120 volt service outlet if you plug this device into 120 volts uh, that type of voltage can uh, cause a lot of damage and stop your heart should you decide to play with it wrong. Uh, and a fatality is a, a sure way to kill a, a good day um, and yourself. So let's not do that uh, if you're not comfortable working around voltage. Uh, electricity, please don't do so. You, and if you choose to, you do so at your own risk. But I highly suggest you don't mimic the monkey. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this in now and we should see our fan spin and our coils should get hot we are plugged in there is our fan now let's come to the other side and sure as shooting there is warm air coming out the other side so everything is working uh, and you notice that it is continuously running it's not turning on shutting off doing anything like that um, because uh, the, we just have constant current going through it there's nothing to limit that uh, 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 the ability for this thing to do its job as the thermostat would normally do so we'll go ahead and unplug it I don't want to run it too long and you see it shuts off so everything's working normally uh, with the thermostat bypassed so we can assume that the problem is most likely in the thermostat so I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff moved around and we'll show you a little closer look at what they're using as a thermostat okay so this is the thermostat from our <coughs> milk house heater that I've uh, taken to bits uh, let's see, and the way that this uh, would sit in the unit would be like so, uh, with our knob on the front. And in order to take that off, you would simply just uh, pull the knob straight off. There's a, uh, a nut right here, and you would loosen, loosen the nut like so. And uh, then this will just push right out of the unit. So that is essentially what we are looking at. So let's see if we can... Uh, kind of dissect this just a bit this is our weighted uh, uh, our, our weighted momentum switch uh, in, in, in a sense and if we look right towards the center we should be able to see these contacts uh, right above my fingertip right right here Let's see if I can get a better point of that. this right here so uh, these would be the contacts inside uh, and you can see that this just kind of rides there. So when we turn this knob, it is actually threading this shaft. Oh, that's probably the wrong. It's already uh, okay. When we turn the knob, uh, it is pushing the shaft, which applies pressure to this center point right here, which makes it uh, uh, go to me, come from me, uh, kind of thing. And uh, 
and that is what's actually putting a distance between our two points of contact. So um, these contacts get dirty and also you don't want to use this uh, type of a heater around anything that's going to produce an art or excuse me gas that could be volatile as this is constantly producing arcing just you can hear it uh, when you're uh, when you have the back off and uh, well, probably when it's all together you could probably hear it arcing in there um, so that is a common failure with these things is this thing will just become welded closed so the thermostat just runs all the time or uh, doesn't make enough contact because it's just dirty so a lot of times cleaning up those contacts would probably fix the problem now I cleaned up these contacts and then I put everything together and it was working and then when I torque this nut down in front it stopped so my assumption is I did something in here that uh, caused a variance in the distance that these contacts are open I can probably fix it um, so I might play around with that a little bit um, but you know this is also the thing is it, you can't really buy these to replace them at least I haven't found it and it honestly didn't look a lot uh, again, these these heaters generally cost uh, fifteen to twenty five dollars U.S. Uh, so it's just uh, pretty simple to just go out and buy a new heater. But I do like the idea of using uh, the chassis as a uh, some type of a project. So I think I'm going to go ahead and bypass fixing this one and just kind of keep this around. Uh, there's a lot of different components there's, that are usable. There's an electric motor. There's a fan. There's a wire. Uh, there's a you know the uh, the high resistance wire and the coils that can be used for for various things there's a lot of different uh, useful well not a lot but you know, there's different useful stuffs that's inside of that that I might use for a future project so uh, I'll tell you what this is what we'll do I'm gonna leave this open for right now I may come back and fix this thing uh, or I may just go ahead and use it as a project so uh, if if I do fix it I'll, I'll put together a follow-up video just a quick one that shows that it's it's in working condition again or uh, if I use it in some kind of a project, I will uh, make videos on that. So anyway, I hope this video kind of shows you uh, the dangers that are associated with these types of heaters. Again, they work, people use them, but uh, I think you should definitely use some common sense. Uh, or, well, maybe a little bit beyond common sense. You know, a lot of, if you're tuned into this video, uh, you know, because you subscribe to my channel, there's, uh, you probably recognize it. Different different strokes for different folks. Some people have a better electricity, uh, you know, knowledge of electricity and how it moves through components, and others. So, for people that don't quite grasp uh, how electricity works and travels on a, on a basic uh, level, uh, you know, it's it's not really common sense for them. They they they're not really going to understand why they should or shouldn't do things. They, they they see the thing in the shelf while the Walmart's selling it. Clearly, it's safe. Well, that's not true, and a lot of it depends on how you use this thing. Obviously, if you uh, uh, leave it plugged in, you know, like I'm I'm sure at some point in time somebody could come across a video like this and say, well, if I just pull this thermostat out and just put the two wires together, I can make it work. Yes, it will work until it overheats and you know burns your house down so don't do that uh, there's a thermostat in there for a reason um, and, and it is the only safety device that's in that machine uh, so I highly recommend not bypassing it the only reason I did it was just to demonstrate you can do it temporarily to diagnose the problem uh, it's not to be left like that you definitely don't want to put it in the service that's just dangerous so uh, I hope that that gives you a, a, a little bit of a peek in how how simple and yet how dangerous these things can be so um, until the next video, I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and I will see you folks then. In the meantime, uh, take care. Okay, so I realized just as I was getting ready to post this, I never put up a, a schematic. So this is just a quick one, and I'm going to throw this back into the video somewhere. Um, everything's probably not perfect, but this is, this is pretty close. Um, basically, this is our, our plug-in right here. Uh, it's not pretty I'm not always a good drawer so, so that would be where our plug would go in and then we would go uh, through the thermostat up here there is <clears throat> a temp limit switch uh, I didn't really point that out at the beginning obviously if, uh, if this thing is situated in an area where if the heat element gets too hot it's gonna open this switch and disconnect the power so that's it that's a little safety item that's nice to have uh, we have our heat element that goes across here we have our fan and then you notice this this switch your lighted the, the lighted switch that's on here 
is basically a two position rocker. It does have three terminals hooked up to it, but that's for the power to the positive side to pass through. Which, which side we're going to ground is where we're going to get uh, whether or not we're using a part of this element or whether we're using the entire element. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. So I just wanted to throw that on there on the end just a little bit. and Because uh, uh, I said I would. So and sometimes I forget that. So, okay, just a quick little sketch and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.